For this project, any Category 3 yarn will work, but I used 3 quarters of a skein of Baby Burnett Sport Yarn in Coral. As for tools, a 5 and a 6.5 mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, tape measure, and elastic. There's a written pattern down below, use offer code TCDDIY for a discount. Watch to the end of the video to learn how to enter this week's giveaway. We're using 5 stitches for this project, and they will be as follows. Chain Slip stitch Single crochet Half double crochet And double crochet this tutorial is for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we are first going to grab our Category 3 yarn, make a slip knot, grab our 5mm hook, and start off by making a chain that is the length from our underarm down to where we want the bottom of the top to be. And I've already measured mine out, so mine's going to be a total of 11 inches, or 28 centimeters, or that's 52 chains. Now that we have our chain, what we're going to do from here is block off that last chain, do a chain up of one. Once we have that, we're going to insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook. We're going to go in with a slip stitch. So we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, and we're going to pull through everything on our hook. Let's do the next one together one more time. Insert our hook into that next loop, yarn over, pull through everything. And we're just going to keep doing this going all the way down our chain. Now that we've made our way down with our first row of slip stitches, what we're going to do from here is do an increase. So how we increase for slip stitches is we're going to actually do a chain out of two. Once when we have our chain out of two, we're going to be flipping our work. And now we're going to be working in through the back loops, but still with slip stitches. So into this second chain that we have from our hook, we're going to go into there with a back loop slip stitch. So just yarn over and pull through everything. Let's do one more together into that next back loop insert, yarn over, pull through everything. And from here, since we just did our increase, we should have one extra loop than we had from our previous row, but this is actually it for a little bit, actually. So what we're gonna do is we're going to keep increasing just along one side, the bottom will remain blunt, until we get from our side to the front of our body. And then once we have that, then we can just go straight across with the body portion. But basically, once we get here, we're going to do back loop slip stitches going all the way down. Once we make it down to the end, we're going to do a chain up of one, flip our work, and then do back loop slip stitches coming all the way back down. Once we make it back down to this increase section, we're going to do a chain out of two, flip our work, do a back loop slip stitch into that second chain that we made, or the one that's furthest away from our hook, and then go down the rest of our work with more back loop slip stitches. And I'm going to keep doing that until I have a total of 15 rows, but yours can be as small or as big as you guys need. You guys just want to make sure that once when you guys are done with this little underarm portion, that you guys end at the top. And then once when you guys have that, I will meet you guys back. All right, so we are back with our little underarm portion. And like I said in the previous clip, I do have a total of 15 rows. And just to remind you guys, once when you guys are putting this up to yourself, this does stretch quite a bit. So just make sure that you guys are taking that into account once when you guys are measuring it up to yourself as well. But once when you guys have this, this next part is super duper simple. We're actually just going to go straight across until we are ready to do another one of these underarm portions. But once we get to the other side, it's going to be a decrease instead of the increase, obvi. But once when we get here, we're just going to do back loop slip stitches going all the way around. Once we get to the end, we're gonna do a chain up of one, flip our work, and then work our way back down. So let's just do so let's just do this first one together and then I'll let you guys just go and have at it from there. All right, so just getting the first row of our body portion done, all we're gonna do is a chain up of one, flip our work and do back loop slip stitches. So super duper simple. Once you guys make your way to the end, do a chain up of one, flip your work, bring it on back and keep doing this until this part spans over your chest until you guys are ready to start doing your underarm portion as well. So I'm gonna keep going until I have a total of 57 rows or that comes out to in total including this underarm portion seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters but keep in mind that this does stretch as well so just remember to keep stretching it once when you put it up to yourselves but i'm going to come back once when i have that entire chunk finished up i'll show you guys how to do your decreases and then we can move on from there and also last tip i'll give you guys once when you guys are finished up with your center body portion just make sure you guys end up at the top of our work so that we can start doing our decreases all along the same side 
So we're back and we now have the entirety of our body portion, including our underarm portion that we first started off with. And now we are ready to start doing our underarm portion, which is same deal. It's going to be the same amount of rows. We're just going to be doing decreases instead of increases. And like I said in the last clip, we did end up at the top so that we can start doing our decreases together. So let's get that started right now. So getting started on our decrease side, what we're going to do from here is start off by doing a chain up of one. Once we have that, we will be flipping our work and we're going to start off by doing a decrease of two back loop slip stitches. So we're going to insert our hook into this first back loop. Go ahead and insert. We're going to yarn over, pull through. Into this next back loop, we're going to insert our hook into there as well. And then once when we get here, we're going to yarn over and just pull through all three loops that's on our hook. So just yarn over, pull through all three. And that is our decrease. And then that is it. From here, we're just gonna do back loop slip stitches going all the way down. Once we make it to the end, the blunt end, we're gonna do a chain up of one, flip our work, and then bring it on back. And the way that we did our increase side was that we only increased into every other row. So once when we're coming back up, we will not be doing our decreases, but once when we work our way back down, we're gonna do a decrease of two back loop slip stitches up here so that it can match this as well. And then that's it for this section. I'll meet you guys back once when we have the same amount of rows here as we have over here for our underarm portion. I will have a total of 15 rows. So yeah, go ahead and do that and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so we are back with our other underarm portion where we did our decreases and we are now all done. I have actually did a chain up of one and cut. And just to let you guys know, I have a total of 72 rows. And from one end to the next, I have a total of 10 inches or 26 centimeters. But once when we're done, we're actually going to make one more that is exactly the same. So same everything actually. So go ahead and just make one more and then I'll meet you guys back once we have both of our panels finished up. So we have just finished up going in with our second panel and it's what it looks like. Everything is exactly the same. And now that we have this, we are now going to seam up the sides and then we can start working on our sleeve. So seaming up the sides is fairly easy. We're just going to sandwich these two pieces on top of each other. We're going to take a look at one of the sides, doesn't matter which one, because we're going to do the same thing to both. And we're first going to be inserting our hook into the front panel corner. And then also into the back panel's corner, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. And from here, we're just going to be doing a single crochet, making sure we're going in through the front and the back panel at the same time. So into the next available loop in the front panel, insert. Next available loop into the back, insert and then single crochet just like normal. Let's do one more together. Next available loop in the front panel, next available loop in the back panel, and then single crochet. Once we have that, go ahead and go all the way down, putting one single crochet into every loop that we have until we don't have any more loops. Do a chain up of one and cut and do the same thing on the other side. So we are back and we have just finished up going in with our seams along the sides. We have flipped everything inside out. And now we can get started with the sleeve. As you guys can see, I already have one of mine done, so we're gonna do the next one together. The first thing that we're gonna to have to do is actually do a little bit of measuring, first of all. We're gonna to wanna to try this on, and then from this corner that we have, we're going to measure up and over our shoulder, and then measure over to this corner. And just to let you guys know, I have a total of 11 inches or 28 centimeters. Now, right before we actually get started with the sleeve, the next thing we're gonna to have to do, now that we have the measurement from this corner up and over our shoulder to the next, we're actually going to grab our tape measure and then make a chain from whatever measurement you guys have. So I made a chain from here to here because I had a total of 11 inches. And just to let you guys know, I had a total of 40 chains. And we're gonna wanna keep that number in mind because we need to go in with our elastic now, this guy right here. So what I did with the elastic was I first very vaguely just put it up to my chest and then reached it up and over my shoulder just to make sure that it was nice and snug making sure that the elastic was doing its job. <laughs> and just so that you guys know, we did cut it just a little bit shorter because it is elastic, it does stretch. So I ended up cutting my elastic to being eight inches or 20 centimeters. And then from here, we're now going to connect the elastic and then we're gonna go in with a row of single crochet and then we're gonna single crochet around the elastic with that chain count that we just figured out for ourselves. So like I said earlier, I had a total of 40. And when it comes to the elastic and figuring out the length, I actually don't have a real method for it. There's no math or one-to-one -one for it. So just go ahead and figure out whatever is most comfortable for you when it comes to your elastic. And then the last thing I'm gonna say is that I am using two different types of elastic in this video. For the shoulder, I'm using this one because it's easiest to tie it into this corner. And then for the 
cinched in portion of the sleeve, I'm using something that's a little bit thicker because it's just a little bit more sturdy. So getting started with adding this elastic, we are first just going to insert our hook into one of these corners, pull our elastic through, and then very simply just tie a knot, making sure that it's nice and secure into this corner. And then we're going to do the same thing to the corner right behind it as well. So we're back and we now have our elastic all tied in on both sides, just like that. And now we can go in with our first row of our sleeve. So all that is is just gonna be a bunch of single crochets. So we're first gonna insert our hook in through any one of these bottom loops. I like to insert my hook into this bottom loop that's near the seam, making sure that our seam is still flipped on the inside. We're gonna insert our hook, pull through, and then I'm just gonna go in with a row of single crochet going all the way up until I hit my elastic right here. And then I'll meet you guys so that we can do that together. So I've just single crocheted all the way up towards our elastic. And then from here, we're just gonna single crochet around the elastic with that number count that we just figured out when we did our measurement. So what we're gonna do from here is still single crochet, but it's gonna be a little tricky because we're going around the elastic. So what we're gonna do is hold the elastic the same way that we would as if the elastic was our work or if these were our loops that we we're about to go into. And from here, just go around the elastic. So we're gonna go underneath and then single crochet like normal. It's gonna feel really weird because the elastic is gonna pull in different directions. So just try to keep it as tight as possible. Let's do the next one together too. We're just gonna go underneath the elastic and then single crochet like normal. And we're just gonna keep doing that until we have that number count that we first measured out. So like I said a couple clips ago, I have a total of, had, sorry, a total of 40 chains. So I'm gonna go in with 40 single crochets that goes all the way around from this point all the way down to here. And then once when you guys get down to the bottom, if you guys are really close to finishing, but it looks like you guys don't have enough elastic, go ahead and just pull your work back a little bit because obviously this stretches and then just make sure that you guys have that exact number count on your elastic. And then once when you guys meet your way down here, just single crochet all the way back down and then slip stitch into this first single crochet that we made and then I'll meet you guys back. So now that we've made our way all the way around with our single crochets, including single crocheting over our elastic and brought it on down, we slip stitch into that first single crochet and now we're going to need to do some back loop increasing stitches. So just to let you guys know, we're gonna start off with doing some back loop single crochets, do a couple back loop half double crochets, and this is all while increasing, and then going up and around the shoulder, do back loop double crochets, back loop half doubles, and then back loop singles. And this is all gonna be dependent on however many single crochets you guys end up having. So I'll let you guys know my numbers, but you guys go ahead and adjust it to whatever you guys have. So what we're gonna do once when we have ended up over here, we're going to do a chain up of one, flip our work because we're going to need to work back the same way that we just came. So we're going to be doing an increase of two of whatever stitches we're working in and then increase into that third. So we're starting off with single crochets and I like to just start off my single crochets with this little underarm portion that we have right here that's attached to the body, but you guys can adjust it to whatever measurement you guys want, completely up to you. So let's just do the first two back loop single crochets together. We're going to insert our hook in through that first back loop single crochet next back loop single crochet into that third back loop put two single crochets into that guy that is our increase of two and then for this section that's all that i will be doing go ahead and keep doing that all the way up until we get to this last point that we have right here and then i'll meet you guys back so that we can do our increase of back loop half double crochets into our elastic chain so we just made our way down with our back loop single crochets while doing our increases into every third. And then once when we hit this, we're gonna be doing back loop half double crochets until we are ready to do our double crochets. That's really just an eyeball thing, that's up to you guys. So I'm gonna be doing two sets of those. But once when we have ended with our back loop single crochets, I did end on two single crochets, not an increase, but I'm just going to cut it clean here and then restart the half double crochets as if it was fresh and new. So I'm gonna start off by doing two half double crochets and then increase into that third. So to do a half double, we're going to prepare for a half double, go into that next back loop, yarn over, pull through. From here, we should have three loops on our hook. We're gonna yarn over and pull through all three loops. That's on our hook if I can. That's one half double. Let's do the next one together. Prepare for a half double, go into that next back loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. And then we're in our second half double, so into that third, we're gonna go in with an increase of two. So here is one half double, and then two half double into that same loop. And like I said, I'm gonna be doing two sets of this. So what we just did, I'm gonna be doing one more with our back loop half doubles. 
once we have our two sets of back loop half doubles, now we're just going to do the same thing, but with double crochets. So two back loop double crochets, increase of two into that third. But right before we get started with that, we're going to need to insert our stitch marker into the same spot that we ended in here, but on the other side so that we know where to start doing our half double crochets and then our single crochets right after that. So all I did was count it out the loops that I used along this side, counted out the same over here, and then inserted my stitch marker into that loop. And then from there, we're just gonna do our double crochets until we hit that stitch marker. So let's just do the first set together. We're gonna prepare for a double crochet, go into that next loop, and then do a double crochet. And we're gonna do one more, so yarn over, insert into that back loop, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. And then now we have two double crochets, so we're gonna do our increase of two into that third. So two double crochet into that third back loop. So there's one. And then there's two. And we're gonna keep doing this all the way around until we hit our stitch marker. Once we hit our stitch marker, we're gonna do a clean break and then do two half double and then our increase of two half double into that third. And then same thing, once we get to the single crochet, do a clean break from the back loop half doubles and then just start off doing our single crochets with two singles increase of two into the third and then keep doing that going all the way down making sure that we are going in through the back loops as well and then i'll meet you guys back once when we have slip stitched into this first single crochet that we made for ourselves so we're back and we have just made our way around with our second row and now we're going to start our third so the way that we're going to do this one is the single crochets now we're not going to be doing any increases into them so from this point over to here no increases so i'm just going to have a total of 10 single crochets always for this first puff section and then once when we hit that then we're going to do our increases into our half doubles and then doubles that we have so once when we get here we're going to do a chain up of one and flip our work so first of all once when we have our single crochet section we're just going to go all the way down putting one single crochet into every loop that we have so go ahead and do that and then i'll meet you guys back once when we have put one single crochet into every single crochet in the previous row so now that we've just single crocheted across our single crochet section, now we're going to start off with our increases. But from here, the increases are going to be the same from the previous row. So two of our stitches and then increase of that same stitch into that third. So let's start off with our half double crochets. I'm just going to be doing one set of increasing when it comes to the half doubles. So we're going to go in with one half double, two half double, and then increase of two half double into that third. Now that I have this set up, I'm going to insert my stitch marker into the same loop that we have, but on the other side. And now that we've done that, we're just going to go all the way across doing the same thing, but with double crochets. So two double crochets, increase of two into that third. So let's just do the first set together. Insert into that next loop with one double. Loop after that, another double, and then increase of two into that third. So there's one. And then there's two and then just keep doing this double crochet portion all the way around until we hit our stitch marker and then from there we're going to do one set of our half double crochet increases so two half doubles increase into that third and then just single crochet all the way down i'll meet you guys back once we make our way down here so we've just finished up going in with our third row which was single crochets and doing an increase of two of whatever stitch we're doing into every third and what we're gonna do from here is kind of the same. We're gonna do more single crochets just on top of the single crochets, no increases. But once we get to this portion, we're gonna be doing nine stitches and then increasing into the 10th. So let's get that started right now. So once when we get here, we're going to do a chain up of one and flip our work. And then just like before, put one single crochet on top of every single crochet that we already have, and then I'll meet you guys back. So we just finished up going in with our single crochets and now we're gonna be doing our nine stitches and then increasing into the 10th. So once we get here, we're gonna go in with nine half doubles to start this off. Into that 10th loop, what we're gonna do is do an increase of two half double crochet. Once we have that, we are going to count out the amount of loops that we have right here and then insert our stitch marker into the opposite side. And now that we have our stitch marker in place, we can now get started with the rest of our work. So let's just do this first set of our double crochet portion together and then I'll let you guys do the rest. So same deal with the half doubles, just go in with nine double crochet and an increase of two into that 10th. So we just put nine double crochets into the next nine loops. Going into that 10th, we're gonna go in with an increase of two double crochet. And from here, same deal as the previous row, do the same set going all the way down till we hit our stitch marker. Once we hit our stitch marker, do 
nine half double, increase of two into that tenth, and then single crochet on down. I'll meet you guys back once we get to the end of this row. And once when we have made our way all the way across with our third row, the next row that we're going to have is going to be the repeat row that we're going to do for the majority of this puff section. So how this is going to work is we're going to do a chain up of one and flip our work. And from here, we're not going to be doing any more increases into the single crochet section. We're just going to be putting one single crochet into every single crochet that we had in the previous row. And then I'm going to be doing 10 half double inserting my stitch marker into that 10th loop on the other side and doing double crochets all the way around until we hit our stitch marker. Once we hit that stitch marker, do 10 half double and then single crochets going all the way down. Do a chain up of one, flip our work, and then we're just gonna keep going back and forth like that just until we're almost where our bicep is because that's gonna be where our first cinch is. So just to let you guys know, measuring from the bottom, because the bottom is a different measurement from the top, measuring from the bottom, the total amount of inches that I have from this first end to this first cinch is five inches. And we're going to need to do about three rows of decreasing so that it can cinch in a little bit nicer. So from the bottom, I'm measuring out until maybe about four inches or 10 centimeters, or I'll meet you guys back once when I have a total of 18 rows, but this is going to be completely up to you guys. Just make sure that you guys meet me back once when you guys are about an inch away from finishing your first puff. So go ahead and keep doing this next section of our sleeve and then I'll meet you guys back so that we can do the rest together. Okie dokie, so we are back with our 18 rows or just about three rows right before we start doing our cinch in. And so for this next row, what we're gonna do is actually do a row of decreases, but we are still gonna maintain the regular single crochets that we have here. So however many single crochets we had, we're gonna keep that. So once when we get here, we're gonna do a chain up of one. We're going to flip our work and start off by doing the same amount of single crochets that we have been doing this entire time. And then I will meet you guys back so that we can do our decreases together. Okay, so now that we are here, we have our single crochets. And now we're going to do kind of the same thing that we did for our last increase row, which was nine half double crochets first to start this off and then decrease of two into the 10th and the 11th. So let's do that really quickly. We're going to prepare for a half double and then half double into that next loop. And once we have that, go ahead and just put a total of nine half double crochets, and then we're gonna be doing a decrease of two into the next two. So I'll meet you guys back once we have that ready. So we now have our nine half double crochets. What we're gonna do is do a decrease into the next two. So we're gonna insert, pull through, insert into the next, pull through. We have four loops on our hook, we're gonna yarn over, pull through all four loops and that is our decrease. Now that we have our first set of nine half double crochets and then our decrease into the next two, we're just going to mark that off on the other side so that we know where to start that. And then we can do the same thing that we did for our double crochets. So we now have our stitch marker in the other side and we're just gonna do this first set of double crochets together. So set of nine double crochets, one into every loop and decrease of two into the 10th and the 11th. Now that we have our nine double crochet, we're going to prepare for a double, go into that next loop, yarn over, pull through, loop after that, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through two. That is our decrease of two double crochets. And we're gonna keep maintaining our nine double crochet decrease of two all the way around until we hit our stitch marker. Once we do that, we are going to do our nine half double crochet and then decrease of two and then single crochet all the way down, not doing any decreases. Once we're done with this row, I will meet you guys back. We have just finished up going in with our first decrease row. We have done a chain up of one and flipped our work. And now we're going to start working in the opposite direction with another decrease row. We're going to have a total of three of them. And this is our second. It's going to be the same deal, single crochets all the way down until we hit our half double crochets. And then into this row, we're going to be decreasing into the seventh and the eighth loops. So we're going to do six half double decrease into the seventh and the eighth six double decrease into the seventh and the eighth and then keep doing the doubles all the way around until it is time for you guys to do your half doubles and then single crochet the rest down so this is fairly simple same thing that we've been doing so i'll let you guys do this row and then i'll meet you guys back just to tell you guys what we're going to be doing for the row after this and then i will show you guys how to cinch in your work right after that so we just finished up going in with our second to last decrease row and our last one is going to be the same deal but instead of decreasing into the 10th, 11th, 7th, 8th, whatever we've been doing so far, we're going to be doing a decrease into 
the fifth and the sixth. So we're going to do our single crochets down, no decreases. We're going to do four half double crochet, decrease into the fifth and the sixth. And then four double crochet into the fifth and the sixth. And keep doing that all the way around. And then go ahead and grab your elastic and get that ready because I will show you guys how to insert that right after this. So we have just made it all the way back with our last decreasing row. And what we're going to do from here is incorporate our elastic. I know this looks like a hair tie, but it's elastic, I swear. But once when we have the length of the puff sleeve of the first puff sleeve that we want, we're actually just going to incorporate some elastic so that it can cinch in right where the bicep is. And this is going to be pretty much the same way that we measured out doing the shoulder portion. But we don't need to do the chain in between because we can just work off of this. So go ahead and just wrap this around your arm, making sure that it's as tight as you guys want it to be just to let you guys know my bicep is about eight inches or 20 centimeters. So I actually cut this to a length of five inches or 13 centimeters. And this is very comfortable around my arm because of the amount of stretch that it has. And if you guys have the same kind of elastic as this one, that's completely fine. Just tie the two tail ends together, making sure that it's really tight. Or if you have one that's a little bit thicker like mine, go ahead and sew it in just like how I did over here. And then once when we have that, we can just go around single crocheting around our elastic and then we'll be done with this elastic part and then we can get started on this second puff section that we have. So this part's gonna be pretty simple. From here, before we do our chain up of one, we're just gonna flip our work, making sure that we're going in the correct direction that we're supposed to be going into. We're going to insert our elastic onto our hook. And from here, now we will be doing our chain up of one. So we're just going to make sure that our elastic is around our hook. We're going to yarn over it and then pull underneath the elastic and the yarn that's on our hook as well. And then that is how we first attach it. And then once when we have this, this part is going to be super simple. We're just going to go around with a row of single crochet, making sure that we're incorporating the elastic into it as well. We're first going to insert our hook into this next available loop that we have making sure that the elastic is right on top of the loops that we are about to go into. Once we have that, we're just going to single crochet everything together. And that's the first one. Let's do the next one together. We're going to insert our hook into this next single crochet loop that we have. Make sure the elastic is on top of that loop that we just went into and then just single crochet. And that's pretty simple. We're not going to do anything fancy. Just keep doing this all the way around. And as you guys can see, this is much smaller than the actual length that I have that's going around here. So you are going to need to pull your current work off to the side, single crochet around it. So just keep that in mind when you guys are going through, it'll all fit, I promise. But once when you guys make it around, do a slip stitch and then I'll meet you guys back. So we just finished up going in with our first puff section and our elastic to start off our second puff section. And that is going to be super duper simple. From here, we're just going to be putting one double crochet into every loop that we have once we make it to the end. Do a chain up of three, flip our work, and then go around the other way. No increases, no decreases for the first few rows. But once when we hit about an inch right before we want to start our second cinch, then we'll meet each other back because we are going to do some decreases for that as well. So just to let you guys know, for this second section, I have a total of seven inches or 18 centimeters. So I'll meet you guys back at about six inches or 15 centimeters so that we can start doing our decreases together. Or that's going to be after the 35th row for me. So I'll meet you guys back once we have all of this done. Okay, so we have just made our way back with my 35 rows. And the next three rows, we're going to be doing some decreases. And we're very close to finishing up our second puff. Just to remind you guys, we stopped about an inch right before we wanted to cinch in the second puff. So once when we get here, the decreases for this is actually going to be the same exact decreases that we did for this top portion. I'm just going to talk you guys through it because there's just a little bit of a difference since we haven't gone in with our single crochets and half doubles but it's super duper simple so for this next row it's going to be another set of nine double crochet and then decrease into the 10th and the 11th so let's just start that one off together just so we have a general idea and then i'll let you guys do the rest on your own because i'll talk you guys through that so we're going to go in with nine double crochet so we are back and I have just gone in with my nine double crochet and we're going to be doing a decrease of two into the next two loops together. So we're going to prepare for a double crochet, insert, pull through, next one, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, 
pull through two. And then that is our decrease. For this row, we're going to continue going in with nine double crochet, decrease into the 10th and 11th, doing that all the way around until we make our way back to the first one, slip stitch, and then do a chain up of three, flip your work. And then just like how we did this top puff, we're going to go in with a row of six double crochet, decrease into the seventh and the eighth, and keep doing that all the way around for the row after that. And then our last decrease row that we're going to be doing, we're going to do a chain up of three, flip our work again. And then we're going to be doing four double crochet, decrease into the fifth and the sixth, and then do that all the way around. And then I'll meet you guys back after those three rows so that we can attach in our elastic and then start to go in with the very cute bell sleeve after that. So we are back. We have just finished our three rows of decreases. And next we're going to insert our elastic again. And this elastic is the same measurement that I had for the first one. If you guys need yours to be bigger or smaller, you guys go ahead and accommodate to whatever you guys need. But this next part is going to be the same. We're just going to single crochet going around the entire elastic that we have. And then I'll meet you guys back so that we can get started on our bell. So I've just finished up going in with our second puff. We have cinched it in and now we can get started on the bell sleeve. And getting started on the bell sleeve, we will be switching out our hook to our six and a half millimeter hook. But once when we have that, we're just going to insert that onto our work. And just for this first row, we're going to be doing some decreases just so that it can cinch in just a little bit before we start to expand because otherwise it'll start to expand right here and look kind of crazy. But once when we get here, what we're going to do is do our regular chain up of three and then flip our work. And just for this first row, we're going to be going in with two double crochets and a decrease into the third and the fourth. So let's get that started together. Prepare for a double crochet. We're going to go in with one, go in with two, and then into these next two loops, a decrease. So insert, pull through, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through two. And for this row, we're just going to keep going all the way around just like that, maintaining this sequence. We're going to slip stitch into that third chain. Once we make our way to the end, I'll meet you guys back so that we can get started on the next row. So we've just gone in with our first row of our bell sleeve portion. And into the second row that we're about to do, we aren't going to be doing any increases or decreases into this one. So for every other row for this bell sleeve, it's going to be a row of just regular double crochets on top. So since this row was a row of decreases, once we get here into our next row, we're going to do a chain up of three that counts as a double. And then we're just going to work our way the same way that we just came back from, putting one double crochet into every loop, making our way all the way back. I'll meet you guys back so that we can go in with our next row right after that. We now have our second row of our bell sleeve all finished up. And now from this point on, we're going to be doing some increases. So we're going to start off this row by doing a chain up of three. Once we have that, we will be flipping our work. And then we're first going to go in with 12 double crochet. Put one double crochet into the next 12 stitches. And then I'll meet you guys back once when we're ready to do an increase into that 13th. So I've just gone all the way down, putting one double crochet into the next 12 stitches. And then into that 13th, we're going to be doing an increase of two double crochets. So let's do that together. We're going to prepare for a double crochet. Go into that 13th with one double crochet. And then one more into that same loop. And we're just going to maintain this pattern going all the way around and actually for the rest of this piece as well. So once we've made our way all the way around while maintaining our increase into the 13th loop, we're going to do a chain up of three, flip our work, and then work our way back just putting one double crochet into every loop that we have. Once we make our way back that way, we're going to do another chain up of three and then do the same sequence that we just did here. So 12 double crochet, increase into the 13th. And we're just going to keep alternating between those two rows just like that all the way until I have a total of eight inches or 21 centimeters just for this bell sleeve portion, or that comes out to a total of 53 rows. And once when we have the length that we want, I'll meet y'all back so that we can go in with our last row for our bell sleeve. So we've just made our way all the way down with our bell sleeve and we have our 53 rows for the entirety of our sleeve. And the last thing that we're going to do is just go around with a row of single crochet, just putting one into every loop. I did cut and tie already, but if you guys didn't, then you guys are in good shape. Go ahead and just go all the way around with a row of single crochet. Once you guys hit that first one, do a slip stitch, chain up of one, and then cut. And then once you guys have this, go ahead and do the same exact thing that you guys have here on the other side. So we are all finished up with our sleeve. We have a total of 53 rows with our increases, but yours can be more, yours can be less, whatever you guys want to do. But once when you guys have one of them done, go ahead and do the other side. I already have mine done. So now we will get started on this little tiny, tiny, tiny top detail that we're going to have right here. 
So now that we're ready to start going in with our top detail, what we're going to do is just insert our hook into this corner loop that our sleeve is going into because we want it all to be nice and cinched. But once when we have that, all we're going to do is just go across the row of single crochet. But when we're going in with our single crochet row, we're actually going to be skipping every other row that we have just so that this can cinch in just a little bit more. So as an example, let's just show you guys. I'm going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And then once when we have this, we're going to be skipping this next row that we have. So this is the one that our hook is currently into. We're going to skip this row and then go into the row right after that with a single crochet. Skip this row, go into the one right after that with a single crochet. And then you guys can actually skip more, skip less, whatever you guys want to do. Just make sure that you don't put one single crochet into every row that we have. Because if we do it that way, then it'll actually expand it out just a little bit, which is not what we want. So go ahead and keep doing this going all the way around. And then once you guys hit this spot, go ahead and cut and tie and go ahead and cut and tie and then do the same thing on the other side. So we are back and we have just finished up going in with our single crochet along the front and the back top border section. And the next thing we're going to have to do is make a little chain so that we can weave it in and out so that we can have a cute little bow tie in the front. So all we're going to do is first, basically, so all we're going to do is just insert our hook into that same loop that we just took our work out. So into that same loop that has our sleeve into it, we're gonna insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and we're just gonna start off by making a regular chain, nothing fancy. And we're just gonna keep doing that until we have a chain that is long enough so that it can make a bow in the middle. So I already went ahead and made a chain of 45 and that came out to about 12 inches or 31 centimeters, but yours can be any size that you guys want. Go ahead and make your chain, do a chain up of one and cut. So go ahead and make your chain, cut once when you guys have the length that you want and then do the same thing that you just did here on the other side and then from there i'll show you guys how to weave it in so we're back and i have already gone in with weaving in one of our chains so we're just going to do the next one together and it's super duper simple all we're going to do is just take our same five millimeter hook pick any one of these loops that you guys want to weave in your chain into so i'm just going to pick the first visible loop that we can see right here and then we're going to insert our hook I like to start a little further back because this is a little bit easier. We can just insert it all the way through until we hit our chain. We're going to place our chain onto our hook and then just pull it through. And then now that we have this, we're just going to continue to do the same thing going all the way down until we hit this middle portion that we have. And I did insert a stitch marker right where the middle portion is, but that's completely up to you guys. Y'all can just eyeball it as well. The only tip that I have for you guys is just make sure that you guys are picking the same loop when you guys go all the way across. Otherwise, your chain will do a little zigzag pattern that we don't actually want. But other than that, just go for it. Do the same thing on the other end, and then this part will be all done. We can tie it up, and it'll look super cute. And we have just finished up pulling our ties through and tying a knot. The last thing that we have to do is just weave in all of our ends. We've woven in our ends, and this is our top all finished up. This top makes me feel like a princess while wearing it, and I couldn't be happier with it. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount. Enter this week's pattern giveaway by commenting the phrase, This Old House. Only because we've been watching a bunch of it lately. But good luck to everyone who enters. Also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Believe it or not, it actually helps. And be sure to share us on Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, Reddit, and Facebook. Links down below. Link to our Etsy page is down there too if you want to buy this piece or any other piece on the channel. Be sure to favorite the shop so you don't miss out on any new patterns. Thanks so much for sticking with us to the end and I'll see y'all in the next one.